Hey friends, welcome to another tutorial, and this one is very, very requested. So today we are going to be folding the 16 by 16 grid human, and this is a great practice for shaping. And a lot of people were wondering, you know, what's a generic human base I can use to practice or fold with, and this is it. Now, this is actually such a simple design that I am not claiming ownership of this design. I don't think it really belongs to anyone. You know, potentially some of the first people could have been uh, like Jeremy Schaefer or um, a couple other people. But it, it's so simple that I, I don't think anyone's really claiming it as their design. And it's a great tool to begin learning some box plate human origami. Now, regardless of the ownership, this is my own take on it. And as you can see, I've done quite a few different things just with the same model. And I'm going to teach you how to do that as well. So we're going to be folding the base and shaping in this tutorial. And I think that'll be very, very helpful for all the people who have been asking for this tutorial. Um, so, you know, if you really like this and you folded it, don't forget, let me know in the comments. Um, you know, drop a subscribe, drop a like. That helps me out a ton. And if you want to go a little bit extra, feel free to join the OBB membership. And you can get access to the private Discord where you can ask me anything and have a nice channel of communication there. All right, so let's get into it. Now, this tutorial is a little bit more beginner than my other tutorials. However, there's still kind of a prerequisite, and that is to, to fold a 16 by 16 grid. Now, if you don't know how to do that, I do have a tutorial for folding accordion grids. And as you can see, we're doing color side up with mountain on the outside. So go ahead and fold your grid if you haven't yet. Come back. If you don't know how to do it, watch that tutorial. It'll be linked in the description. All right, so we have our accordion grid and we can start pre-creasing. Now I'm gonna flip it over to the non-color side just to fold. And we're gonna be folding the diagonals in half. And this is the majority of the pre-creasing we're gonna do, which Again, is why I call it such a simple design that it doesn't really have an owner. So we have one side done, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side, just like this. Take your time. Make sure your pre-creasing is fairly precise. That'll help a little bit later. doesn't matter too, too much, but definitely helps. And we're going to open it back up on the color side. Now, the next areas we're going to pre-crease will be right along here. And what I'm going to do is from our center, I'm gonna count two units. You can see these two units up the diagonal. And we're going to make a mountain fold that spans three units. And so I like to do this in the air. I recommend you learn to do this in the air as well. Um, this makes pre-creasing a lot easier because you can keep track of where you are. It's a little bit more fidgety and requires some skill, but it helps a ton. So we're now going to do that same thing on the opposite side. Again, we're counting up two units from the diagonal and then folding perpendicular three units. Just like this. Now you can see we have these creases we just made. And now all we're going to do is finish up the pre-creasing by folding two units across and then back towards the middle. And then same thing on the other side. So it's going to look like this. One unit, two units, like that. And one at the top here. Just like that. And then same thing on the other side. So here, cross, and then up like this. And there we have it for our pre-creasing. Now, if you want to solve this from crease pattern, this is basically the crease pattern. And I will also link the crease pattern for this on my website. It is just on my regular crease pattern page, but I'll make it easier to find and we are ready to collapse. 
All right, so I have drawn in the lines of where we just pre-creased just to make it a little bit easier for you to see at home. You don't have to do this on your own, but we are going to start collapsing. So the way I like to collapse crease patterns like this is to actually fold up our grid along the long edge. So we're going to be squishing it into a stick like this. So I'm going to rotate it this side and just fold the existing creases from our accordion grid up to the middle like this, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side, <clears throat> just like so. And <clears throat> we have our stick. And I'm going to throw out some box pleat terms here, but this is a uniaxial design, so one axis, and this will be our axi. Um, this is where the face comes in, the body, and then the split between the legs. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. But you can see we have it folded up as a stick, just like so. And now we're going to collapse. So we're going to work our way now from the top and go down to the middle, do the same thing on the other side, and then the legs. So first we're going to rotate it to the side like this. And I am going to open up our pleats just a little bit for the edge grid fold right here which is already a mountain. And if you folded from my crease pattern class, you can just see this as a regular stretch that's going to end up on this curve. So essentially what we're doing is we're following the grid lines, but using our pre-existing pre-creases to help us collapse the rest of the way down. So mountain, valley, mountain, valley. That's essentially how you can force a lot of crease patterns to collapse um, if you pre-crease them. So as you can see, I'm opening up just so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just following the creases we have before. Now the tricky thing is to keep this part clean, which all you have to do is really fold along our pre-creased points all the way down to the center like this. Now you notice it's not laying flat yet, and that's because we have to do the opposite side to let it um, fully collapse because it's getting stuck up here and I recommend to do this in the air like I'm doing but you'll notice that once we do the other side which is the exact same process it will lie flat so let's go ahead and do that I am already about halfway there in order to get the face flaps you're actually going to have to be folding it inwards like that as you're collapsing that's the natural way the paper wants to fold. And once we have all of that done, you notice we can fold it back into a stick. Here we have our arms. We can fold this little flap up in for our face. And when I put it back to the middle, this first flap, we can fold it down. This is going to end up being our, our face right here, or our head, any of these flaps and we have our arms behind. All right, we're almost done with the collapse. We're gonna do the legs now. I'm gonna flip it over to the bottom. And the legs are a lot simpler. You just follow the grid lines and the pre-crease lines, uh, but you have to kind of do the whole bottom edge at the same time. You can't do it one by one like the arms. But I think this one's actually easier. It's just going to get a little bit tight towards the middle but we already have all our lines pre-creased and the grid is helping us out a ton which is why i'm able to do this so fast you can slow this part down if you need to see it again now you notice we have this line drawn that we've pre-creased we actually don't need to fold along it because it would fold the center in like that we can actually just force from the back to let our legs close. And that's going to make some hinges underneath, but we don't really have to worry about that. And this is our base. So again, very simple collapse, very simple base. We are ready for shaping and um, that's pretty much it. All right. So with our base, there's actually a more advanced version that we can do. And this would be a little bit special for this design but if you're a beginner I do not recommend you to do this if you are advanced I recommend you to try this out because it'll give you a little bit more shaping options 
So there's two things we can do if we flip open onto the inside of our layer and spread squash the first row that we're able to, which is this inside layer right here. Um, now, once we have that done, the first thing we can do is to level shift out the layer. So if I open up the legs right here, you can actually push this out with kind of a closed sink from the inside because of that spread squash, which becomes a ridge shifter. And now we have these wider legs. We can make more rounded thighs like that. And it shortens the legs a little bit here, but you can turn that into clothing, whatever you'd like. Now that's one option. Now the second option would be, um, and let me just re-sync fold this flap that I did. The second option is similar in terms of we're widening the legs, but the execution is a little bit different. All right, so we're back at our regular base. Now this one I'm just gonna do on this side for now. It kind of requires you to swing the arm out in advanced, but once that, right, we have that spread squash here, we're just going to open it like that and we can just squish this down to lay, make it lie flat. But it's gonna open this whole layer riding up the arm and using the hinge which swivels the arm out, we can actually kind of um, get it to recollapse flat. And what this gives us is, again, more width on the legs, even though we have a seam in the middle, but also you can start to round out the body, play around with that. Um, this one might not be as flat foldable. You're going to have to do a lot of 3D shaping for this, but give that a shot if you would like. And I recommend trying that again if you are an advanced folder and you are able to follow along with what I did. All right, so let me undo this and we're going to get to our regular shaping. All right, so we are back to our base and we can begin shaping. Now we're going to do shaping in stages and we're going to start off with level one shaping. And after that, we're going to be doing level two shaping. We're not doing tertiary shaping because it is a simple model. And if you don't know what those mean, feel free to go to my skill issue quiz. Um, that's obb.design slash skill issue linked in the description. And you can read about the differences and see some examples of the shaping. Now for level one, it's um, in short, it's our structural um, shaping. So for example, shaping out the arms. So you can see I already have these folds done, but we can just valley fold out the arms like this. And when I flip it back over, you can see that it already kind of looks more human-ish with the arms out. Now, next thing we want to do is get the rest of the proportions for level one shaping. And that's going to involve this grid line right here. So if you notice, our torso is about three units. We're going to shorten it just a little bit. So right underneath the arms, you're going to do a mountain fold like this. And then we're going to do a valley fold and I'm going to draw it in. It's going to be about halfway between these two grid units. So it's going to be as close to halfway as you can. And how I like to do it is I just like to position my thumb, fingernail, and use that to force it down like this. Now, it might be getting stuck on your arms in the back, but just move them out of the way. So that's like this, and you're good to go. All right. Now, for the legs, we don't really need to position these yet. We're going to talk about pose before we do that. But we have just a little bit more of a um, posture thing. And this is going to start leaning into level two shaping, but not quite. And let's flip our model back over again. And this is to get our waistline. So what we're going to do is we have this crimp and I'm going to grab the edge like this and put my thumb about right there. There's no exact measurement. And I'm just going to 
valley fold inwards and you're going to see that this little swivel is starting to form and once that starts to form I'm going to press down and just crease it where it's at again it's not the most neat and it's not supposed to be it just kind of holds position and we're going to do that same thing on the other side let me show it again my thumb right here just a valley fold so I can see the swivel fold down the swivel and then fold the rest of it down just a little bit like that and what does that do so when we flip it over to the other side for one that actually gives us a waist right a waistline and kind of a part that opens up our torso which we can use shape it's not exactly anatomically correct but posing wise it kind of gives us a twist axis so with those swivels we folded you can see how it's not exactly folding flat and it stretches as I turn the figure um, that's very important for posing because you can do some twisted torso directions like you can kind of see in this one or in the sitting position this one's a little bit more open but you can kind of see a similar concept of the torso twisting and this is going to be explained a little bit in a short lecture about posing but yeah all right so before we actually get to shaping level two let's talk about pose so whenever i shape humans i i think about the pose before i actually translate it onto the paper and here you can actually see me doing a kick so i am doing a like martial arts style kick and the important thing to notice here is that i'm drawing my reference from life a lot of times life is your best reference because you automatically have to obey the laws of physics. So I know I'm transparent, but I'm actually standing on the floor so you can see how the weight is distributed through my body. I'm using my upper torso as a lever and that is planted by this left foot right here, which allows me to then, you know, generate a kick with my right foot. It makes sense logically as I'm able to execute this, you know, with physics, I'm using my arms to counterbalance myself and the most important part to pay attention here is the directions like the vector directions of my torso and my hips a lot of poses can be changed or added with dynamicness or look you know really stagnant depending on how your hips are positioned and how your shoulders are positioned there's a lot of telltale signs of those so you know don't forget about those. I think a lot of times when I see origami humans, um, people don't exactly think about that and they're very squared and locked off. And when they're squared and locked off, even if their arms are in various, you know, poses or whatever, or doing various actions, it'll still look extremely stiff. You can look at some of my older models and notice that they look stiff even if they're doing something. So that is the main reason. You can see with my torso, right it's pointing like that direction and then my hips are opening up so they're pointing for the direction of the kick um, and that's kind of how that's going to work so we're going to try to mimic this pose for that tutorial and i'm going to show you kind of the thought process of going for it to do execute this well it's actually really advanced so don't worry if you can't exactly do this if you want to choose your own pose to practice you can do that um, you know, I've made, you know, tens, twenties of these and done whatever poses I want. You know, I, I li like this example, right? This was the sitting pose. Um, so choose a pose you would like to do, but if you'd like to start with a more difficult one to understand just the basic concepts, feel free to follow along with me here. Now, before we start as well, material wise, a lot of this we can do just folding, but in order to keep it, you know, um, all our positionings where they are, I'm going to show how to use some methyl cellulose to kind of wet fold or wet shape that into place. But let's get into it. If you have MC or glue, feel free to grab those. If you don't, no worries, you don't need them. If you wanted to fold it from foil, it'll work just the same. But yeah, let's, let's start. All right, so let's start off with the plant leg actually. Um, and since this one's gonna be grounded, it'll be an easy, Place to start and then build off of. So that's going to be our left leg right here. Um, 
we're still kind of finishing up level one shaping. So let's fold in the rest of the parts, which would be the foot and the knee. So for the foot, I'm just going to fold up, you know, between these two grid units, um, just about to there. You can kind of see, you know, like that. And as you practice more, you'll understand some more human proportions later if you want to change it or whatnot. But that's essentially it. Now to actually get it round, we don't really want to just leave it like that. I kind of do some 3D kind of crimp similar to what we did to the torso right there. Just to start to define an ankle and the calf. And I'm doing this quickly, but this might take you a little bit longer time. So don't, don't worry, take your time on this. You can pause the video and come back. But essentially that gives me an ankle and it's you know locked at 90 because that's our plant foot and that's how we do the foot there now let's go on to the knee so the knee should be about halfway between the you know hips and the ankle so that is kind of just right in the middle of this grid unit right here as well we're going to do a very simple knee and i'm just going to start by mountain folding along that reference which is between those lines like that. And already we have kind of the knee being defined, but I'm going to continue that 3D shape from the calf up to the knee and see, so just push it in a little bit like that. Same thing on the other side. Um, and that's really going to add another definition to that knee joint. And, and that's kind of what I want. You can already tell it's a lot different than just a flat surface here. Lastly, we have the thigh, which we don't have to do a whole lot here. It's going to change when we actually shape out the pose. So um, all you really need to worry about here is the direction in the hips. And, you know, we're leaned over. So it's actually kind of turned and faced downwards that direction. So what I'm going to do is swivel it. And to do that, I'm just going to mount and fold along the edge here and then turn it this direction like that so just a simple mountain valley kind of not exactly a crimp but that will also allow me to begin posing the foot in the right direction like that and to really round it out I'm just gonna apply some pressure on that joint, soften the paper up a little bit, and that'll let us kind of pull it into that position, right? And so here we can start to see what we need to do to finish the shaping. So the hips are now kind of pointing in the right direction, right? But the torso is not. The torso right now is in the same direction as the hips, but on our reference, you can see it's pointing down to the floor. So it needs to be kind of like that. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to do that, all I really have to do is twist it into position right here, which is going to stretch out this crimp there, just a tad. And I'm just gonna push it to kind of like refold along that crease. It, it might go over, um, it won't fully line up, but it's gonna help us start getting the correct direction. Yes, yeah, so it's going to elongate just a little bit up. Let me show. Let's see, it's starting to push up. That way we can kind of start locking in that twist. And on the other side, it might also have some consequence. I'm actually going to fold this in a little bit as well, just to kind of counterbalance that change we did. Now, a lot of times as you're working, the thing you just worked on might unfold itself. That's totally fine. Don't worry about it too much. All right, so now we're like this. Let's do the other leg now for the kick, um, and then we'll get to the arms. All right, so the kicking leg is gonna be a little bit easier because for the most part, it's straight with like a pointed toe, but we still just want to define our parts. So let's do the foot again, same kind of structure but this time when I do the ankle 
I don't want it at a 90 degree. Uh, but what I normally do is I start it in the exact same way just to get the ankle structure formed lightly like this and then I pull it so that it points the correct direction before I like crease a little bit harder to set it into place. So, it's, so now you, you can kind of see it, it's, it's kind of like a pointed toe. Now for the knee, I'm going to start with the same thing, just the mountain fold. But we don't have to be so dramatic with the kind of bend and, and push in thing that I did there. Right. This time I'm just going to kind of add a small mark at the exact knee location, like this. So it's almost like I'm pinching them, just one at a time, right where that joint is right and that's our kicking leg now our kicking leg also needs to be swiveled out a little bit so we can pretty much do the exact same thing we did on this side which is to fold backwards and then fold at an angle like that and my legs in this photo it looks like an obtuse angle but it's actually about like 90 degrees so as long as they're about 90 degrees, you can get to the uh, kick. And, and that's, you know, I, that's all <laughs> the flexibility I really have. Um, you can probably make it more dramatic if you're replicating a different pose um, or a different martial artist. But for me, that's, that's as much as I can <laughs> reach. So there you go. And you can fidget around with it however you want, but I won't spend too, too long. Now, I, I will let you know, I've done an example of this before, and I put it on display, and I spent around two hours shaping everything out to make it as close to this as possible. I'm going like super fast in this tutorial, just so the tutorial's not super long, but if you really want, you know, if I'm going too fast or you want to spend more time, please spend more time shaping. You definitely want to spend you know, way more time shaping than actual folding to, you know, get your finished result. Okay, we're ready to begin the arms and upper torso and neck. So let's do our neck really quick just to kind of block it out. Now my head is just slightly tilted. So, you know, our, our face is right here. Um, to, to tilt it, we don't have to do too much. This, this design doesn't have that much of a neck, but we can just fold a little swivel from this corner, you can see, to that corner. So I'm just kind of dragging into place like that, just to kind of get it going. And now to kind of start a neck, after I've done that, I'm gonna go on the opposite side and do one of those swivelly things we did on the torso. Just kind of like pushing it in, just to thin it a little bit so that you can get kind of the semblance of a shoulder and then same thing on the other side. And this is actually going to bend the face corner a little bit because we don't really have a you know, square face. Um, so you do want to shape it out just a little bit like this. And we're just leaving this part for the chin. We also don't have a pointy head, so I'm going to round that out a little bit just with a mountain fold like this. Right, looking pretty good. Now let's start on the arm. So the arm shaping I'm gonna keep relatively simple. Um, we're gonna start from the back actually, and I'm just going to valley fold this whole layer in half. So on a small paper, this might be a little bit challenging, but it's not too bad. Just be careful as you fold. Like that. This is just regular origami paper, by the way. I forgot to clarify what paper I'm using. It's just 15 centimeter origami paper. But once we have that in place, right, we just need to fold our hand and our elbow. So it's it's kind of like the foot again. Uh, let's do the elbow first this time because our hand is going to be different. We can kind of spot out how much room we need for the hand and then for the shoulders. Um, for here, we can do it about halfway. Now the 
I, I don't I forget what the bones are called, but your forearm and your upper arm actually aren't exactly the same length. I think they're slightly one slightly longer than the other. But for this example, it doesn't matter too much. If you'd like to look up all anatomy proportions, you can go ahead and do that. Um, good study material. Right, uh, but from this point, I'm kind of just looking at my reference to see where I should position this arm. And then after I kind of have it, I'm going to fold the hand. The hand, I'm just opening up the flap at the very end just a little bit. And then like recreasing right there, adding a small pivot. And that's like a very small hand here. You can do a more detailed hand if you'd like, but that's kind of all we need. And then this is more level two shaping, but you can kind of see we have like a bicep going on. So if you want to open up the layers from the back from where we fold it in half, that would be how you start your level two shaping for some of those finer uh, details. Oops, I twisted the wrong way. There you go. All right, and now we just have this last arm here. Now this arm, it's hard to tell in the reference because you can't see it, but it's actually dipped this way and then pulled in. So what we're going to start with is actually, instead of folding it in half at this angle, we're going to fold our arm at a steeper angle downwards. So instead of it being, you know, T-posed out directly, I'm dropping it sideways and you can see it kind of lines up with our other arm. And then I'm going to fold it in half. Just like this. Right, so it's like tucked in a little bit and behind. So it's going to stick out this way. So now from this angle, I'm going to valley fold in this direction. And then pick my elbow that and then our hand will be kind of right here so let's do our hand and I like to round up this is again a little bit of level two shaping but a little extra details less pointy would be the start of level two we don't really have to do too much level two shaping here most of it's all structural um, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of break down what the differences between the level two and level one shaping we did was, but all right. So that's generally our structure. Now, as you can notice, our arms are kind of all over the place. They're not really staying in their desired positions. So I'm going to show you a quick example of what wet shaping would do with methylcellulose and how you can do it. All right. So there's three things that I'm going to show with this wet shaping. First off is methyl cellulose. You can also use PVA or glue. I'm a big fan of PVA. Um, MC has been growing on me again. I used to only shave with MC, then moved to PVA, and now I do a little bit of both. Now, people have a lot of questions about methyl cellulose. That will be for a different video, but you can kind of see the texture here. It's, it's not super watery. It's definitely on the thicker side. So measure out your MC accordingly. There's no exact recipe. So I know you might ask me in the comments, what's my recipe? I don't know. I just take a couple spoonfuls, throw in water, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll be making a paper video later, and I'll talk more details of what you can do to look for. But essentially, you just kind of want like gloopy MC. Should be fine. Second tool is a paintbrush. I'm using a small paintbrush like this. You know, you don't need a whole lot of MC for this sort of paper. I also use a bowl just to keep my surface clean. But you would get some MC, um, let, let's work on this hip, right? And you just coat it a little bit like this. Um, if you use glue, you don't want to coat the outside, you want to coat the inside layers, let it half dry and then shape it out. So that, that's a slight different process. Um, but with methyl cellulose, you can kind of just coat the whole thing. Got to be careful though, if it's too watery, it's going to start to destroy the paper. Since mine is not as watery, I don't have to worry about that as much, but it softens the position so that I can kind of work it into its shape. And then once it's in the spot that I want, let me move things out of the way. Sometimes it starts to stay on its own, but the main key is to let it dry. And to 
do that quickly, I have a hair dryer and I just, you know, blast it with air. I'm not going to turn it on because it's going to blow up my mic, but I'm going to quickly dry this and kind of show you. Um, you know, it's, it's already starting to stay better, but when I dry it, it's really going to stay. All right, so I dried it for like, you know, 20 seconds ish, and it's not fully dry. You can still see a little bit of shine, but for the most part, it is stayed put. And the nice thing about this is say you messed up and it dried, right? You can always just recoat it, rewet it a little bit, dry it again. And with the dryer, it allows you to make quick, fast changes on the go and kind of segment it. So you can work on just this leg, then you can move on and whatnot. Um, when you use glue, you have a little bit less time. It's a little bit different, unless if it's uh, the PVA, like I use a PVA from Paper Source, and it's actually not entirely permanent. So you can kind of unpeel your fold or almost unfold the entire model if you messed up and then reapply it and let it re-dry. Um, you know, this, this is all kind of preference on how you like the shape, but there's a lot of different options you can do. This one just works pretty well. So let, next up, let's do this top leg and then I'm gonna do the torso and then finally the arm and we'll kind of see slight differences um, really quickly. Now, again, this process can take like hours. <laughs> right. So for now, I'm just gonna do it super fast and you'll see like just a slight improvement, but let's get to it. All right, so now we did the kicking leg. You can see it, it's now held its position a little bit more this way at the angle for the kick. Um, and then let's do the arms. I think the torso is okay actually without the methyl cellulose. Um, we'll just do the arms to kind of get it a little bit more closer to that and then like that. And we are done. So I went ahead and methyl cellulose and then blow dried the arms. So now they're in the right position. And you can see we're about 90% representative of with our reference. Now, obviously it's not exact, but I do encourage you to spend a lot more time than I showed in the tutorial, and that's gonna greatly pay off. And after you give that one a shot, don't forget to get creative. You know, I think in terms of folding time, you can be able to fold the whole base very, very, very quickly and start having a lot of fun and making a bunch of different poses. You know, I think these boxers are, it's, it's like pretty cool. You know, obviously I, you know, Use some glue to keep them in place but you can get really creative with what you want to practice um, interesting sitting positions you know a whole lot so you can test you can make mistakes you can fix mistakes you can just practice various techniques um, you can try doing the methyl cellulose you can try using glue now i will say kami is not the greatest paper for methyl cellulose um, mc shaping really shines with handmade papers but hey again it's just practice so Go ahead, try that for yourself. And if you do end up making them, be sure to tag me in your Instagram post or Twitter post. You know, I want to see what you fold, um, and I want to see how many people are, you know, are able to follow this and what they come up with. So yeah, definitely, definitely do that, and I'd love to see it. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I've got a bunch of more exciting tutorials coming in the next year, so be sure to check those out. And also, in addition to you know people requesting this video, I've gotten quite a number of requests from people to asking me, you know, boys, how can I contribute more? How can I support more to your channel? And I find I don't um, advertise my membership enough. So if you would like to do that, um, please check out the membership. I think. You'd really enjoy it if you were able to join. And our Discord server is really nice. I think the people there have found it extremely useful. We have some awesome conversations. Um, they get to help contribute to what videos come next. So if that sounds good to you, go check out. You can just click the Join button, and I believe there's information there. And once you join, there'll be a link for you to join that Discord. But yeah, once again, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze now I'm